Welcome everyone, my name is Jeff Smith, I'm a product manager for Oracle, and today's conversation is a continuation of one that Executive Vice President Juan Loeza started a few weeks ago about Oracle's approach to the multi-model versus a converged database solution. And I'm going to be talking about that today and how it pertains to REST support. Uh, you can find my email here on this slide. I also like to tweet at that Jeff Smith, and I have plenty of REST-specific solution-based videos um, for the Oracle database, and I'll provide links for those in the description of this video. I'll also have a link to ones, which I recommend that you go watch. It's about a five-minute um, discussion, and it sums up the um, problem statement very nicely. Just in case you don't have that five minutes or if you need me to do a quick catch up, the general idea is that you can either have a single purpose database engine that handles something like machine learning or blockchain or spatial or a JSON um, document solution or relational data, or you can find the database engine that tackles all of those workloads and Oracle falls squarely on the single or converged model and we make this viable by offering you a single set of APIs that allow you to bridge across all of those um, data formats and data presentation um, options and um, another thing that makes this possible is that we have a REST solution that allows you to use HTTP and uh, JSON to communicate with the data storage layer regardless of the type of data that you're working with. Um, the other nice um, idea that comes out of this is you know have all of the workload, have all of the processing of the data occur where the data lives. So the SQL and the PL SQL engine that the Oracle database gives you allows you to run all of your application logic or as much as you feel comfortable doing so right where the data lives so it's going to be extremely performant. Uh, another resource I suggest you take um, a look at uh, Distinguished Product Manager Maria Colgan does a deep dive uh, on Juan's um, video in the form of a blog and the link is here on the slide which I know you can't click but I'll add a link to that in the video description as well. So I'm talking about REST today and I'm not going to do a lot of uh, product demonstration and I've, I've done that before. Uh, I'm going to talk about conceptually what it means to support REST in a converged database with a couple of concrete examples. The product that Oracle Database ships um, with to support this type of access is called Oracle REST Data Services, or ORDS for short. But in general, what I'm talking about is having a set of um, APIs uh, reachable via HTTP, and what I really mean is HTTPS for security. And to be able to communicate that, regardless of what your application stack is, uh, a web page, a mobile app, um, a classic client server application, or even simple things like curl scripts for automation. Uh, but HTTP is ubiquitous, it's easy, it's the protocol of choice for developers today. And the um, method for communicating um, and representing data of choice is JSON, which has really just exploded in the last four or five years. So the Oracle solution for REST marries these things, including SQL and PL SQL. So the language of the database is married with the language of your application and the um, data exchange format, in this case JSON. So regardless of whether you're working with tables or JSON documents, or XML documents, um, spatial coordinates, um, analytic qu queries, uh, machine learning algorithms. You're going to be able to make HTTP calls, communicate via JSON, and have all of that come in and out of the Oracle database. 
and I'll just step into a few examples of this and explain to you what I mean by that. The ORDS technology itself is a no-cost feature of the Oracle database, so this is included with your license of Oracle database, and that even extends to the free editions of Oracle database. This technology also works with your on-premise Oracle database, but also works in your Oracle Cloud um, hosted database. So it's an open platform in the sense that the things that you build for your on-prem workloads, if you need to move those or have a hybrid solution where it's partial on-prem and partial cloud, easily moves up into that environment and you don't have to do any code rewrites. Ords takes the normal database response, um, a result set, uh, the output message of a stored procedure, a ref cursor, and we automatically format that into a JSON document and we have a JSON standard across um, all of the Oracle technologies so whether you're working with um, an HR solution or ERP um, when you pivot from that into data coming in and out of the Oracle database that JSON format is going to be the same and we play by the rules of the HTTP road so you're going to get your standard HTTP status codes and the requests as you make them, you're going to be able to make them um, with JSON bodies as well. And it's very link friendly and we provide links to resources that are created based on what you're doing in the database. And of course you might have more than one Oracle database. So you're going to be able to work with as many of those databases as you have registered with words as you'd like. It's going to be performant. It's going to be secure and it's going to have a complete development experience so we give you rest apis to manage words itself and the database we give you a graphical user graphical user interface to develop and maintain and tune the rest apis we give you a command line interface for doing all of the same and there's also a complete peel sql api for managing your rest services if you want to learn more about ORDS in particular, uh, the easiest link to go to is oracle.com slash rest. And from there I have a quick video demonstration um, of the ORDS technology. And of course we have links to things like hands-on labs, the docs, and of course you can go download it. Let's take a look at a different, um, the different types um, of ways of representing data and the way ORDS can support those. So for most database people, the classic table, columns, rows, or tuples, if you want to impress your math friends. Um, and of course, if you're from the Oracle world, the employees table is the most cited and used uh, example. So pardon the familiarity if you're already bored when you're looking at employees. Um, but when we're looking and looking at uh, things inside the database in the REST world, um, these are collections and they have inside of them items. And when I'm um, performing the HTTP verbs against them, whether it be a get, a post, a put, a delete, um, the mid-tier or ORDS is able to translate your HTTP requests and translate the JSON attached to those requests into workloads that happen in the database. Words takes that request, delivers the output back to you as an HTTP response, and instead of getting um, a result set in the, what you would expect from your JDBC driver or, or from something like SQL Developer with a, a GUI and a, and a grid, you get a JSON document back uh, with links to the metadata and uh, links to go follow um, the items in that collection which would be the individual rows. All of the data types are supported including your user defined types. These RESTful services are um, defined by the language of the database that you've been using for the last however many years you've been working with Oracle. So SQL or PL SQL is used um, to define what uh, these services are doing in the database. So the select star froms, the inserts, the updates, the deletes, the merges that you've already written, 
uh, can quickly be pivoted into a RESTful service. And if you already have a series of PLSQL APIs that you've been managing to power um, your Oracle applications, you can quickly wrapper those with RESTful services to take advantage of the decades of code that you've already built. Another option, if you don't want to write any code whatsoever, and I know Juan's a big fan of this as, as well as I am, uh, we have an auto feature with words in the Oracle database. You can simply uh, specify a table, a view, a stored procedure, and ask the technology to publish a set of REST APIs for those objects. So full CRUD for a table, insert records, update records, batch load records, get one or more records back, use query by example, full support um, for parameters. And for stored procedures, it's basically remote procedure calls um, via HTTP, and we automatically unwind um, the requests um, that you have into JSON and the responses um, into JSON for you. So it's, it's very little work, um, again, to take advantage of all the things you already have in the Oracle database. Just this week, we had a new autonomous Oracle database service launch um, in the Oracle Cloud, the JSON document um, autonomous um, database. Uh, the JSON um, data um, format has, like I said, caught fire over the last four, five, six years. I, I very rarely run into XML. Of course, it's, it's still out there. So JSON's almost just the ubiquitous de facto choice now. And whether you decide to store that as a, as a text or a binary column in an Oracle relational table, which we of course also support. Uh, or if you want to basically use the Oracle database as a JSON document store and speak the language um, of JSON, like sort of like a, a Mongo style API set. And of course, um, that's also backed by a full REST API available. So instead of asking uh, the database via HTTP to insert a record to a table via a put. I can instead do a put or a post to the JSON document store or SODA API and treat everything as um, collections or items in that collection. And of course, uh, we follow the rules of HTTP. You uh, create a resource. Um, the responses come back with links to those um, items that have been created in the Oracle database, and you can follow those, which makes it really a breeze to build really nice responsive UIs, again, whether it's in a web page or in your mobile app, or even, again, if you're automating something um, and you're running everything via curl or, or whatever. Spatial data. Um, you know, you're doing uh, a search for stores near you, it'd be very convenient if that entire stack could be served out of a single converged database, you know, relational table for all of your store locations um, in, a, in a spatial um, repository somewhere storing the geo coordinates um, of those physical locations and having that mapped out on your screen. Well, the good news is you can do that. Um, the spatial technology is included with all editions of Oracle Database at no additional cost. And again, uh, all of your REST services are defined via either SQL or PLSQL. And spatial isn't, in, isn't treated as some um, second-class citizen in the Oracle Database. It has all of the native things you get with SQL and PLSQL, so all of the um, performance optimizations, um, all of the security models. Um, all of the resource um, gating, you know, don't let users spend up too much CPU based on, you know, requests. You know, all, all of that is included for spatial just like it would be for, you know, the relational example we just showed you. And when it comes to your, your REST APIs, we very um, conveniently for you format the JSON responses using the, the GeoJSON um, standard for that data. It's quite common to store physical um, media in an Oracle database. Um, the data type for that's generally um, either going to be a B 
file where it's not actually stored in the database, but it's a link to a file in the OS, or maybe you do want to actually store it in the database as a binary large object or a blob. Um, your REST APIs can easily uh, put those um, files inside of the table, um, get them back out, uh, you supply the MIME types, we automatically format, or actually automatically return um, those requests such that your browser, your mobile apps, know how to handle um, that data coming back. Oh, this is a MP4, you know, launch the video player, or oh, this is a PDF, launch Adobe, or whatever your, your PDF um, viewer is. In this case, I have XML. I simply tell the API that I'm dealing with XML, and we no longer do that JSON formatting anymore. We, we either allow you to generate the XML yourself, or we return the raw XML as it's stored in the database. Just another example, the, here's an image um, that I'm pulling from a gallery that I've built in a REST um, full services um, setup. My REST API is basically 30 lines of SQL because I chose to actually write it myself instead of using the auto feature which would have been just a right click in a single API call to turn on but the, you know this could be anything it could be a, a, a music file video this happens to be just an image machine learning uh, analytics these are very popular majors um, for students now, um, you know, data is running this world. You know, the data-driven economy is well recognized. Um, thankfully, the Oracle database has been building our analytic function uh, library continuously over the past 30 years, and that also extends into machine learning. Uh, the beauty is it's all of accessible via SQL and PL SQL, which makes it very easy for us to leverage and deliver as fully functional RESTful web services. Um, the machine learning algorithms, um, what we support there is uh, very extensive. And, you know, the, there's also, you know, analytic uh, functions, um, which for me, I always crack a smile. I know when someone's working on their homework and they're on Stack Overflow and they're asking how they can pivot, you know, rows to columns, and I'm like, oh, okay, the professors are um, looking to see if they were paying attention when they were talking about their analytic SQL functions. Uh, when you go to build those, uh, it's very easy to build them as a, as a RESTful service. And for the machine learning, um, again, you're exercising those via PL SQL and SQL calls. Um, so you, you define uh, your template or the URI pattern, uh, you define the uh, verb, you know, the get, the put, the post, the delete behind that, and you define the SQL or the PL SQL that powers that. Uh, the database gets the request, gets the answer for you, and returns it back in, in JSON, in JSON for you. That's the end of my uh, presentation. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want a deeper dive into any of these topics, uh, if you go to thatjeffsmith.com, that's my personal blog, um, I've got almost 100 um, posts on just ORDs alone where I talk specifically about things like how um, the Oracle Database and REST supports things like relational data, spatial, machine learning. I also invite you again to go check out Juan's video, Maria's blog post, and I'll also post some other resources that you can follow. And I'm pretty sure uh, this series on the converged database model, the conversation, the debate will continue. We'll have follow-up videos and posts, and I also invite you to leave any comments or questions that you might have, and I'll do my best to get back to you on this. Thanks again.